Welcome everybody to the Single and Stiletto Show. I'm Suzanne Oshima and I'm a matchmaker and dating coach at Dream Bachelor and Bachelorette and I'm also the founder of Single and Stilettos. Today we have on our show Jennifer Dar, and she's a transformational coach at Timeless Living and I'm so excited to have her here today because today we're talking about a very, very, very important topic. Mm -hmm. The perfect marriage isn't always so perfect and she's speaking from personal experience but before we get into the topic... Jennifer, I would love for you to tell our audience a little bit about you. Yes, well, hi. Um, thank you for having me, Susan. Um, I'm Jennifer, and I'm happy to be with you guys today. Um, I'm a transformational life coach, and I usually work on timeless goals like love, relationship, confidence, and um, self-confidence, actually. And I'm from Montreal, so if you have a, a little accent, it's the French accent from Montreal. Um, and actually, like I was saying before, like people make a little bit of a fun of me when I say funny things, but I like to play around that. Um, I'm also uh, I, um, graduated from Accomplishment Coaching, which is an ICF accredited coaches training program. And yeah, thank you for having me again. Great. Well, let's get into the topic of quote unquote, the perfect marriage. So I know you had the perfect job when you were living, and this is all when you were living in Montreal, because now you're living in Hoboken, New Jersey. But when you were living in Montreal, Canada, you had the perfect job, you had a wonderful husband, you had the nice house, everything that I think a girl dreams of having. And you felt that there was something that was actually missing. And tell us about how you went through the process of meeting your husband to be your fiance and then getting married and how old were you and everything. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things where everything looks perfect on the outside. Um, and it's almost like there's nothing I should have been complaining about because it was all great. Um, but what was missing for me was happiness. I didn't really feel fulfilled. I mean, I was happy in the things that I was doing. I was not like crying miserable and all that thing. But I would, I was miss like I was missing myself was missing in the whole mix because I was living a life that wasn't myself. Um, so I got married at 23 years old. A lot of times, like you say, that getting married at that age is young. Um, but you know, like. I always say that no matter how old we get married, it's always forever. It's always for life, no matter who we choose. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's through meeting actually a life coach one time that he said, you know, nine couples out of 10 are not truly happy together. And it really hit home. It really hit home because I wasn't happy. I was not the person that I was meant to be. I was living a lie, basically. Um, and granted, like he was a wonderful man. And it was like, it was nothing about him. It was myself discovering all that. Um, so can I ask you a question about that? And, you know, you said there was nothing is to people on the outside, like to your friends and family members, did everyone think that you had quote unquote, the perfect marriage? Oh my God. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we had a great time together. Like we were always laughing and we had things in common. Of course, I wouldn't have married a guy without anything, but you know, like it, it looked great on the outside. Everybody was like, wow, like you got the perfect life. And so how many years in or months in did you start to realize that you really weren't happy? Um, well, it's until I met that coach. So I was in a seven years relationship. Five, so it was been probably after five years mm -hmm. that I realized that. And t take us through the process where you started to realize that you just weren't happy and the things that you weren't happy about in yourself. Um... Well, I really got into questioning myself of what I really wanted mm -hmm. and what would it be like to really be myself in a relationship. Um, I actually got detached on the person per se. I said, I really started to focus on what I really wanted out of a marriage. I wanted a person to communicate with, to travel around with, to learn culture, to be myself and to having like a somebody um, supporting me in my dreams and vice versa. Um, so it was really more like a process of self-exploration. Mm -hmm. um, and through that, I did things that I never thought I would be doing. Like I was the kind of person that was saying, oh my God, I'm never going to cheat on anyone. And then I found myself in that situation. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so would you say that I, you were married for seven years and I think that's a long time. Um, yeah. Would you say that you started to grow and change within that seven years and he stayed the same or did he change also when you guys just grew apart? Um, 
Well, it's all about perspective. Like his perspective was that I changed and he did not. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my perspective was more like we're just like going apart. So did now in your in your mind, though, did your husband at the time, did he did he change or did he really stay the same like he thought? He was the same. I mean, he was he was a sweetheart, very authentic. And from the beginning, he always knew what he wanted. And I just realized that his dream was not my dream. His dream life was not what I was dreaming about when I was a little girl. Now, when you married him, did you, because this is something that a lot of women do, is they they marry someone, or it's not even marriage, I should say, because sometimes you can just date someone for a long time, and you get into a relationship, and a lot of women will get into the relationship, and they'll hope that the guy changes to something else, to something better of what they picture him to be. Did you get into your marriage hoping that your husband would change to something better? I did not. It, I, it was really like it was really myself that I wanted to change to be to that standard because I thought that having a perfect life was that. I thought that I had to give up on the dream that I had to be with this man. That was my sacrifice. It was like, okay, I have to be that person to make it work. I never really wanted to change a little bit because I wanted him to, of course, like agree with me and have these things in common and. Um, right. But so, I don't want the type of person to change somebody. Right. So so take us through the process of how you went through this transformational change and then what made you decide to end the marriage at the time? Um, I guess it was really realizing, projecting myself in further years, how core values are so important. Like I, I wasn't seeing myself. I'm, I don't see myself as, you know, um, a mother of children, having a house and traditional household. It's beautiful. And it's not my dream. And I was really looking at that. It's like, this is really not what I want. And I, even when I actually told him that I didn't want to have children, he was crying. And wow. who am I to remove his right of having children? So there, these, like, you cannot remove that from someone. Yes, you can choose and empower and say, okay, Okay, I'm not going to want to have kids or something like that. But this is something huge for somebody that has like, you know, traditional and uh, that was like his forever goals. And I mean, I, I and I said, you know, I cannot deny myself. This is not the life that I want. I cannot offer that to you. Wow. So at that point, it was is that when you both decided that it was best that you not remain married? No, it actually was a year later after that. Okay. And were there other core val values that you were missing? Um, well, the communication part. And, you know, in hindsight, with all the work that I'm doing, like, I'm sure I would have reacted differently and see different things, you know, things differently. Um, but, like, what I was missing the, bo the most was more about the communication, like the extreme respect and support that a uh, relationship is together. Um, you know, like... It was my birthday this weekend, and I have my card that my husband gave me, my hus now husband. <laughs> her uh, second husband. Let's clarify. Everybody, that's just her second husband. She's not still together with her first husband. No. <laughs> um, but he said it beautifully because he says, um, I love you for always standing by me and making me a better person. It's, it's the hard times that makes a relationship, not the easy ones. I mean, that's Aww. like... It's true. It's like it's uh, with my ex, we were never really fighting because everything was staying in the surface. Like we were never going deep. And what I'm realizing is that a relationship is strong when you actually can fight together, but you fight with your hands holding each other, even right. though you disagree. Because you work through things. That's what a relationship is, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. So I'm sure that wasn't an easy decision for you to make because you made a comment at the beginning of the interview that you felt like people should get married and stay married forever. So I'm sure that was a really hard decision for you to make to finally get divorced. T talk to us about that process, how you went through that. Um, it was really hard because uh, in that moment, I knew I was going to be the bad person. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I knew that I was standing for myself and going for what I, for what I really wanted. 
So the actual process was more about staying strong and standing for what I wanted versus listening to everybody else's reaction and all, because everybody has something to say. Everybody has stuff showing up. Everybody wants to give you advice. You should do this. Oh my God. And then their stories are showing up and um, it's, it's really hard to go through this. Yeah, and I just, I want to bring up a really important point because I think a lot of people think that when it's you, you're the one that's making the decision to break up or go through a divorce, people think that you're not hurting. You are hurting just as much because it was hard for you to make that decision. It, I'm sure it didn't feel great for you, right? No, <laughs> not really. No. And I'm sure a lot of people were very judgmental about you making that decision and why can't you make it work, right? Absolutely. It's the why, why don't we make it work? Why don't we go to therapy? And why do we all do that? Like they all have something to say. Right. So how did you kind of ignore what other people were saying and being judgmental and still trust that you were making the right decision? Um, well, I didn't really ignore them because they were in my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little hard to ignore. Right. Um, but I, I, I did have a few friends that were really non-judgmental and just there to listen so I thank them for that because I needed at least those person to be able to support me and listen to me because I knew what I wanted but it was just like I just had to deal with it and talk to myself I mean I was so my vision was so clear and powerful and I was so certain of what it is even though I had no idea how everything else would pan out that this kept me strong about my decision Right. So in, in the advice you would give someone, say someone's going through right now with their fiance, they're, they're going to get married soon and they're not really sure. Would you say, because, you know, you brought up a very important point. You started to find out core values where you and your husband were completely different on. I mean, children's a huge thing, but there right. are other things. So what advice can you give women before they get married? Um, well, number one, there's no right or wrong choice. There's only choices. Mm -hmm. um, and then really picture yourself growing old together. Like, what is, what is the thing that made you fall in love with your husband-to-be? What is the thing that you love about him? How do you see yourself when you're 70 years old in your rocking chair together talking to each other when, you know, you're not, you're not in the same shape that you have. You probably have maybe a few children and grandchildren running around. Like, look at yourself there forward yourself great so my last question for you is for you to give us your best tip when it comes to getting married and finding the right person um well the best tip is being you <laughs> it all comes down to that um, but really honoring who you are and not being shy of telling what you want to the person that you're with uh, even though they're not going to give you what you need um, your happiness doesn't depend on the other person. It depends on you, and the other person only complements your life. I, you know, it's so funny. I say that all the time. When people are looking for the right person, I'm like, no one can complete you. Someone can only compliment you. So we're totally in line there. So it's very, very true. So ladies, keep that in mind. So Jennifer, how can our audience find you? Uh, you can find me by visiting www.jenniferdahl.com. Great. So thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Single and Stiletto Show. Our show is available both in video format and podcast format. If you'd like to view the videos, you can go to singleandstilettos.com. And if you would like to get the podcast, you can download it from iTunes. And if you would like to get our free report on the top 10 secrets on what attracts a man and what turns them off, you can click right here on the video or you can go to singleandstilettos.com.